We begin in Maine, where the search for the gunman in that mass shooting that killed 18 people continues. Officials provided an update to media earlier today. We need to be careful. Uh, we need to be professional. And that's what we're committed to do. So I would expect that we're still days away uh, from completing uh, those particular uh, investigations, those particular crime scenes. Now, there appeared to be a break last night. Tactical units surrounded a home linked to the suspect. Drones and a helicopter circled overhead, too. But police left the scene after about 90 minutes. Other investigators later carried out a further search at that property. The CBC's Allison Northcott is following all of the latest developments from Lewiston. Well, we know that it is ongoing. Robert Card, a 40-year-old military reservist, is still missing, and police are continuing to search for the suspect. Uh, this is the third day of the search so far, and today uh, police or public security officials here in Maine say that the, the search is going to be narrowing in on one area, right, in one of the areas that we'll be looking at today is in the water, uh, the river near the boat launch where the suspect's car was last seen. So that's an important area for them. So they're gonna be having divers in the river. They'll have helicopters scanning the water from above and they'll have officers doing a ground search, a line search all along the banks of the river as they look for any clues, any evidence, and of course, for the suspect himself as their investigation continues. They'll also be continuing their work at the two crime scenes, so the bowling alley and the restaurant where 18 people were shot and killed and several others were shot and wounded. And they say that that takes time. The investigation needs to be thorough. They need to go through every inch of these establishments and they need to to look at every inch of evidence that they can find there so they're they're warning people that it, it will take time. It could take weeks, as you heard him say uh, earlier today. The suspect fled the, those scenes after, and that's when this manhunt began and continues. And we did see, as you mentioned, that scene last night around a home where police surrounded the home. They were saying over a loudspeaker, come out with your hands up. Today, they said that doesn't necessarily mean they know someone is inside the house, but it there, I guess th they said that it means that they could be somebody in there and these are the steps that they have to take to do those verifications. So they're telling the public you might see that again today and in the coming days as they continue their search. And let's turn now, of course, to the people who were impacted by this, the community, but also the families of the victims. Because Lewiston is a small city, everyone does seem to know someone who was affected. What are you hearing from members of the community? I'm hearing a tremendous amount of grief and disbelief. People who just don't see Lewiston as the type of place that would see this type of violence at this scale. And there's also the fact that it is a small city. People are very interconnected to each other. So a lot of people know someone or know of someone who was injured or killed. So it's a very heavy feeling for people and very difficult for a lot of people to process. Have a listen. We don't know who's affected by it. Um, I used to be a teacher and my wife's a teacher. So thinking about the kids and having to explain it to them and how the kids are going to have to re-enter the schools next week and try to give them a little bit of sense of normal. But it's just trying to make sense of all of it. How are you feeling with all this? Is it a shock, this happening in your city? Of course it is. That doesn't happen here. That was the CBC's Alison Northcott in Lewiston, Maine.